Again, we're buying this $258,000 home. We're gonna put down 5% uh, and then take out a 30 year loan. So we got to reduce that by the 5% down payment, And then we'll figure out what the payment's gonna be at 5% interest and then what's gonna be at 6%. So I wanna put this into my spreadsheet. So for this one, a little bit, I wanna know what my, uh, let's see what is this the cost of the home, and then I got to calculate my down payments, and then my balance for the loan. The balance. All right, so let's start here. So the cost of the home that is that two hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars. One, two, three. And I want that to be dollars. My down payment is going to be 5% of that. So I'm just going to type the 5% here. And here I'm just going to make that calculation because I want to see it. So I want to know, and the computer's asking me, hey, you want to multiply those? Sure. I'm just going to do it myself, though. I want to know what is that times 5% down payment. So that means I'm going to put down 12,900. And then looking at the difference of those two, be what the loan is going to be for. So that's the loan balance. Now, as far as the loan goes, I need to keep track of what's the rate for the loan, so the APR for the loan. And they told me to start with a 5% APR. Uh, I'm going to do this monthly. So my K is going to be 12. And my N for years is going to be, I believe it said 30. Right? 30 years. Okay. And I have a couple of options to figure out what my payment is. I could use the spreadsheet version of the formula for that loan payment. So let's see, that would be this one down here. The last one calculates the payment based on initial loan amount, or I could use the compound interest version of it. So I'm going to go for the PMT version of it because I think it's cleaner and easier. But we can double check the other on Desmos. So the payment for a loan or a payout uh, retirement fund is PMT. And it's going to prompt me to give the rate. The rate is always the periodic rate. So that would be this APR of five divided by 12 payments per year. So that's my adjusted rate. Number of periods is always 12, the K times the number of years, comma. My present value is my loan balance here. And I believe that needs to be a negative to come out right. So I'm gonna hit a dash for negative and then click the loan balance, comma. And then the future value is optional. It assumes it should be zero. I'm just gonna put it zero in because I want to have this paid off at the end of that time. And it says my payment amount should be $1,315.75. Okay. All right, so next, so how are we doing on this problem? We've got, how much is the loan gonna be for? We took the 5% of the down payment and took that off of that to get the loan amount. So that would be my $245,100 that I have to borrow. We found the monthly payment at 5%. Now I'm gonna do it at 6% for comparison. And one cool thing I can do here is I can just kind of come off to the side here and just type 6%, staying with 12 months and 30. And I'm just gonna repeat that balance over here. So if I put the same kind of numbers above that this formula expects, it just uses those four numbers. And I just fill that formula over, it'll make the same calculation based on those numbers above. The only difference was the 6%. So now I can see for 5%, I'm going to have to pay $113.15, sorry, $1,315.75. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to pay $1,469.50. Let's just think about that for a second. 1% difference in a loan over 30 years is 1% a big deal. Turns out it is a big deal. Now, it's, it's more than $100 a month, which adds up over time. So I just want to consider here the total payments. 
on question didn't ask about this, but the total payments would be this amount times 30 years times 12 months per year. So in this one, I'm gonna to have to pay a total of 473,669. Because of the way I chose those numbers, I can fill over for a comparison. 529,000 is what the other one's gonna end up being paid total. Um, so that 150-ish dollars a month uh, makes a huge difference over time. Just a hundred thousand dollars more. Now, what is that? That's really like uh, sixty thousand dollars more over the thirty years that I end up paying. Pretty remarkable. All right, so I would double check that on a calculator. So on a calculator, we're going to apply this last formula there. Yeah, it. it um, it's always good to review your home loan information. And, and one thing is the decision, how do you decide when it's right to refinance? And that's what we're gonna look at for the written assignment next class. We're gonna take a scenario about a loan and, and see if it's worth after a certain amount of time refinancing based on uh, new interest rates. And I've refinanced a couple of times when interest rates dropped and it turns out it was worth it for me. All right, Desmos, let's try it. So we want formula is this one right here. Was that amount 245 100 so 245 100 times parentheses my rate i'm going to do the five percent rate the first one divided by 12 is parentheses to, oops divide there we go parentheses one minus parentheses one plus the rate five percent over 12 months per year Close parentheses to the power parentheses since it's a loan it's got to have a negative power 12 times 30 close parentheses and there's that same number the spreadsheet gave me 113 uh sorry 100 1315 dollars and 75 cents uh, if i want to change this to the six percent i can just go change those fives to sixes here in the formula and then i should get that other 1,469.50, which is what the spreadsheet said also. So we have a couple of options on how to calculate that. 